Um, so this is, uh, we're talking about the independent training, the doctorate in child and adolescent uh, psychotherapy. And as you can see, it's run, it, it, we, we um, are part of the BPF, the British Psychotherapy Foundation, and the clinical and doctorate training is run in collaboration with um, the Anna Freud and uh, UCL. Um, so it's really a collaboration. Um, and um, the child training, it's always good to know where we started from, but was established in 1982. So we're a long running child training and it's accredited by the Association of Child Psychotherapy. There are four child trainings that are accredited in England and we're one of them um, and one of the larger schools. Um, so we... Um, we will discuss in detail or we'll give you some detail about aspects of the training as we go through the presentation. And, you know, we operate under a professional ethic, ethical framework and attending to diversity, equality and inclusion. Um, the theoretical orientation of our training is um, training um, that it, it's the independent tradition within psychoanalysis, recognizing the values of diverse perspectives and independent thinking. Um, one of the uh, um, incredible advantages of being part of the BPF is that we also offer a Jungian stream. So in conjunction with our colleagues from um, uh, the BJAA, um, a, a specific um, a Jungian stream has been um, created for um, our, our applicants, our trainees who are on the child training, who are in Jungian, in an, in Jungian analysis, who also want to... Um, um, uh, uh, have more um, uh, understanding of um, Jungian theory and how to apply that in practice. So again, we can pick up questions about that as we go through. Um, so thinking about um, child psychotherapy, what is child psychotherapy? So you, uh, I'll let you read the slide and just talk a little bit um, about um, child psychotherapy. You know, Winnicott says that, you know, that when, it is a way, as we are seeing here, of, you know, a, a deeper exploration, looking underneath the surface of, you know, what children communicate through their behavior and through their actions. And Winnicott often quoted um, uh, an Indian poet, Tagore, and he said, on the seashores of en endless worlds, children play, which I think really captures that richness that we're looking at what's happening on the inside for the child, but also linking it to the outside, which is very much in keeping with the independent tradition. So, um, you know, Winnicott says that play is a creative space and it's an opportunity for people to play with ideas. And that's what we're creating in our work with the children. In child psychotherapy, we um, create the space in our therapeutic relationship with children and watch their play, stories, conversation. Um, in, in the sessions, child psychotherapists encourage children to lead on the play and conversation, not to direct it, not to come in with an agenda, but really to lead and see, um, you know, where their, you know, concerns, difficulties, joys, challenges lie. And while the focus is we're trained to work with children with very complex needs and in the health service there, um, uh, the children who get referred to us and we focus on on the difficulties and the impasses and challenges in their lives because they often come from, you know, very traumatic and um, very difficult um, early experiences. It's also important to 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 think, as I say, not only about the challenges and how we can, you know, support um, you know, talking and thinking about those, but also to think about um, the strengths that children have. Anna Freud would describe it as ego development. And this is this is really important because actually sometimes we need to do very specific work to build a child up to be able then to explore um, some of the uh, challenging areas um, in their lives. Observation is hugely important. So the work people do in preclinical weaves so um, centrally through the core of the training itself. Um, and we need to really observe um, ver verbal and nonverbal cues to help gain an understanding of what the child's communicating and what might be the underlying emotion and, um, and worry they have. And of course, none of this can happen unless we build trusting relationships with children and the night wider network that as Winnicott said, you know, 
and um, there's no such thing as an infant and in that he was saying we can't not think about a mother when we think about an infant and with children they've got complex networks around them you've got parents and um, you've got the family wider family schools and depending on the child's circumstances and where they are social care and and uh, many other agencies so it's very interesting and very varied it's a great profession i can't um yes and it's one that i um it, it always um um it, it never fails to nourish me really i have to say um, and we need to know about development and developmental stages so that we can think about the functioning of the child. And Anne Hurry, one of the people who founded the training back in 82 because they really wanted to find, um, you know, a house for independent thinking and, and, and to use that theory, you know, talks very much about developmental lines, understanding them, and that we just, you know, nudge the child onto kind of healthier developmental lines as they get older. Um so um I'll I'll hand over to Aka now, yeah. Oh just I think it's Nick 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 next. Oh Nick next, sorry. Okay. First okay. hi, everyone. Remember hi Nick. Sorry. <laughs> hi, thank you, Elizabeth. That's very helpful. And um I will just speak a little bit about the my experience in the training and how you know, the kind of skills that you acquire during that long-standing training of four years. Obviously, in the preclinical, you will have um, kind of develop your observation skills, as Elizabeth said, and kind of applying more psychometric ideas of your observations. Um, but actually, in the training is where you will be able to really apply on a very practical and clinical level what you have learned the two years of the preclinical and kind of have an extensive experience of to trying to build on the skills of observation more the the kind of feelings that um stirred up in the sessions but also within you to be able to understand and build a more coherent and holistic idea of the child's experiences which will allow you then to be able to really go on and understand and explore disturbing thoughts and very overwhelming states of mind um this doesn't happen um you know very quickly it takes years and that's why it's four years training it will take a lot of thinking and a lot of exploration of your own kind of um responses to things within the sessions um but also what I have found quite helpful in the CAPA training is that we're really thinking a lot about the environment of the child, like the family, the support network, the school, and how can we really um, think around all of these parts of the child to be able to help them develop, not just within the therapy, but also outside and in the outside world, which is very, very important in a holistic way of looking at development. Um, also, in a way, the, in child psychotherapy, we also try to kind of like, understand feelings, experience them, and then kind of build a narrative and express them in words, which then will help the child to be able to really move on and develop their language and a more emotional language within them. Um, we hope that with the therapy we will start and restart a normal developmental process that will go take the child back to the more normal developmental stages that they need to kind of move on and develop. Um, and also, you know, one of the important bits of being a child is to kind of develop and sustain friendships, build on significant relationships. And constantly being able to, what we hope we will equip them is that we hope that they will be able to later on move on with relationships and be able to really build on those skills even after the therapy has finished. Thank you, Elizabeth. So during the training, um, you know, you will, as we said, you will use and kind of develop specialist skills and knowledge around child development 
infantile state of mind and also um, adolescent state of mind with working with young people up to the age of 25 and their families. He'll be part of a multidisciplinary team within a child and adolescent mental health service, which means that you will kind of represent child psychotherapy, but you'll be working alongside family therapy, um, drama therapy, sometimes you might have in the clinic, um, your supervisor, who is also a senior child psychotherapist, um, a team lead, psychiatry at some sometimes, which then it will be able to build on different ideas and how can you really um, learn how to, to kind of speak about psychotherapy in other professions um, and contribute your psychometric approach to the team thinking. Um, you will work with severe and very long-standing difficulties with children who might experience long-standing problems within their family and school settings. And that takes time, but you might also work with children that they might require just a bit more of a short-term psychometric approach, which help them much quicker to kind of go back to the normal track of development. Um, and then you'll be able to adapt your adapt to the needs of the individual, of the individual and the children within the therapy. Um, and I think what's important in the IPCAPA training is that we also think about the social and cultural factors of each child, which is really important because it's embedded in their psychic development and in their emotional world. Um, and also you will learn to work creatively. You will get on the floor and play. It's not just talking therapy. Um, and that's where you will be able to really create the space where play, as Elizabeth said, is not just the child play, but it's a common state of mind between the therapist and the children. Thank you very much. Thanks, I'll take Nicole. you over to Akin. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Simon's speaking a little bit about the kind of structure of the training. Um, so really it's sort of split into sort of two parts, really. The bulk of your time as a trainee, you'll be in placement in CAMS, as Nick was just saying, or similar service. Um, and then you'll have the clinical and academic teaching as well as part of the professional doctorate's qualification. So the programme includes teaching and supervision, and you'll get that on your on your placement. But also when you're doing your intensive cases, your case when you're seeing a child up to three times a week, you get special supervision for those very complex cases. You'll also have your personal psychoanalysis, which is four times a week while you're on the training. Um, you'll be in a salary training post on an NHS band six in, in, in the CAMS. Uh, there is options for part-time training, but that's usually three three days a week rather than three and a half days a week or four days a week on your placement. As Nick was saying, we go up to 25-year-olds, so you might be working, working with uh, parents and infants. Uh, you're working in primary, primary school children, secondary school children, college, college students, and potentially young people who are in work or, or studying. So it's a real range of um, young people that you're trained to work with by doing this training. Um, there's also an intensive work as well, as I just mentioned, with patients from different ages. So there'll be under fives, um, latency children, so basically primary school children, and then adolescents, really sort of teenagers. And again, it's really about working with children at different levels to really kind of see where they are at their, at their development and hopefully getting them back on track in a more um, more normal emotional functioning. Um, alongside that individual work, we're also very aware that child psychotherapists have a range of skills and a range of ways of working. So you can be trained to work in brief work, to offer consultation to other, other mental health professions and potentially teachers and social workers. You'll be working with parents and carers, families, maybe groups of young people, teams and networks. So really, I know there might be a perception that as a child psychotherapist, you are working one-to-one -one with young people and children, but actually there's real breadth to the kind of work that you'll be doing. In terms of the professional doctorate side, you will be kind of learning in your clinical seminars in research around child development, childhood psychopathology, and also psychoanalytic therapeutic technique, which will really vary, as Nick was saying, in terms of the type of child, their presentation, the age of child, and their background. 
you'll be learning advanced research skills and also applied psychoanalytic theory and practice. So we really hope that at the end of your four years with us, you'll be a very skilled and confident uh, clinician, but also have a sense of um, kind of contemporary research, how to think about research and talk about research and use that with your clinical practice. Uh, can you go to the next one, Elizabeth? Thank you. Sorry, for some reason it's not moving on for me. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. No, it's just not moving forward. I don't know why. Can I show okay. you my screen and then? Can you try clicking. Oh, there we go. I'm doing it. Oh, I've got it. Yeah. This way. Yeah. Sorry. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Elizabeth. Sorry. So, um, um, so the trainings are funded and quality assured by NHS England. And after a successful, successful applicant is accepted onto the training, they'll then apply for an NHS post as well. These posts are four years fixed contracts in Jeremy and Akam's team, and they cover salary and some training expenses. And the analysis that you'll have while you're training is subsidized by the, by the, by the training fees. Um, there's also time allocated for your clinical work, which is the bulk of what you're doing on the training, but also research and other training requirements. And just to say as well that, you know, we're in quite a fortunate position that the training has expanded in recent years and also expanding geographically as well. I think a few years ago, we were mainly a London based training, but now we've got trainings across the southeast and southwest of England and the east of England as well. So trainings are coming quite from, from quite far and wide, sorry, from far and wide, which is a real sense of the profession kind of growing. And a real worrying acknowledgement that actually young young people and children have got such advanced mental health needs that really have to kind of address them. And I think the current climate is actually that is being addressed, and there's more funding going into our profession, which is great news for us and prospective trainees. Um, and, and just to add, just because hmm. we put in the, the regions, didn't we, where there's um, uh, NHS England funding, but we've got trainees from Northern Ireland and Wales as well who are funded by their local. So. Uh, local area so if people are further afield they're also able to train that's right thank you elizabeth um also just to be clear that while you're doing the training you have to be in a clinical placement because actually this is a professional doctorate so everyone will be working clinically while they while they train um there are some cases where there are trainees who are not eligible to work in the uk and apply for the nhs posts but they can still undertake the training, sometimes on a less than full time basis and by self funding. And we can support those trainees to find appropriate placements. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah. Did that, did that work? It has, yes. Yeah, it's moved on. So, just a word on uh, what you must have to, to apply for the training. Um, we require you to have a kind of range of of, of um, academic experience. Um, generally, that comes from uh, undertaking masters that are run by the Anna Freud and by Birkbeck, but also um, the the courses include uh, work discussion seminars, courses on psychoanalytic theory and child development, and infant observation. And as Francis will talk to you later, we also run a foundation course which takes in some of those courses. So are there, there are different there are various pathways to get onto the training and to accrue those courses that you need. Um, also as well, you'll have to have experience of working with children and adolescents from different age groups. And, and that can be in health and education, social care and other sectors. And I suppose we'd be looking for you know, as we spoke about earlier, we look, we think about children as under fives, as primary school children, and then as adolescents. So ideally, at least across two of those age ranges, you'll have experience working with children, just so you understand children and the sense of their normal development. Thinking about your personal characteristics, you know, we're not looking for someone who's a finished article, but someone really thinking about the length of the training and the commitment involved, someone who's also quite robust and empathetic and passionate about working with children, and also somebody who can work well in a team as well, thinking about your experience on the, in, the, in, the CAM, in the CAMS team, which is a very important part of the process. There's also as well, someone who's got some understanding of the process of psychoanalysis, and that can be for your own experience of it, but also for what you've learned on your, your preclinical courses. And again, that's important because 
once you're on the placement, you'll be working in a psychodynamic way as a as a child psychotherapist in training. So that's that's that, that's a key key aspect. Um, thinking about things it helps to have, um, certainly in a, an observational reflective stance, the ability to kind of sit with things and sit with things in a thoughtful way, and also th- sit with the uncertainty of what you might be experiencing with a child in the room. Um, an understanding of child development we talked about earlier, and also the unconscious mind. Um, certainly, poor experience of working in mental health services is not essential. We have trainees, trainees who come onto the training from health, education, social sectors, things like housing and youth work, and, and really can be very successful in the training. Others come from maybe creative sectors like the media and similar professions. Um, in recent years, the ACP, our professional body, has changed the requirement. So it's no longer a prerequisite that you have to have your own personal therapy or analysis, but it's recommended, um, but not essential. And I suppose recommended because actually the, the emotional demands of being on the training and working with children who are very vulnerable uh, means that actually, if you have had some personal therapy work yourself, it puts you can put you in a kind of better place. We're also, as Elizabeth was saying, we're kind of expanding the profession geographically, but also really aware that we want to expand the the diversity of people coming into the profession and the training. So welcoming people with lived experience around mental health from a diverse range of backgrounds as well, and really thinking that actually for the for the um, children, young people we'll be working with, to have a workforce that re- re- reflects as much as possible is is really important. Uh, Elizabeth, thanks, thanks, Saka, and I, we'll move on to oh, if I can get it. Oh yes, I've got it. So jump in, um, Akin oh, and Nick. If, if, just, if, if, if did I get it? There's just one you missed about the bursary. The last one is just um, oh yes, the one, that's yeah, serious, yeah. yeah, okay, that's okay. Just very briefly, also as well that there is some financial support for um, for some preclinical students who are thinking about applying for the training um, funded by Health Education England. And also these bursary students get, get mentors as well to support them along their journey to become, to join the training. And basically the eligibility is for students from black and Asian and minority ethnic backgrounds, students who live outside London and students who are experiencing financial disadvantage. Thanks, Elizabeth. Oh, great. Sorry about that, Jack. And I just, it's because it's clumsy moving it forward for some reason. Um. Um, but also, I was going to say, jump in on this one if you think I've I've uh, missed anything here, um, because what we wanted to talk uh, was about the um, the independent training itself, and that um, as as Akin was saying, and as Nick was saying, uh, uh, speaking to his slides, that it uh, that we aim to offer. Um, and we do offer um, a, a, an integrated clinical and research um, program and that it is really carefully designed that uh, the research skills that their trainees um, learn about and develop going through um, are, are really um, uh, selected and sourced thinking how this links to child psychotherapy. So, you know, they've done a lot of work in that area. and. Um, and then how this links to clinical practice and can inform clinical practice. I, I often say this thing that there's a shocking statistic, something like, you know, 70, 73% of fully funded research doesn't get from bench to bedside. So we're really keen to develop um clinician researchers who can really think from the ground up what are the questions that need to be answered um, and how can they be answered and I think this training the combination of the the clinical theoretical and research skills that um, the trainees develop and um, puts them in a position to be able to do this and particularly now because we you know uh, we are training people to work um, in the NHS um, and um, you know how you can think about current practice within that. Um, as I said earlier, the um, central theoretical orientation for us is the independent school. So thinking about, you know, for example, uh, Winnicott, Bolas, um, Fairborn, uh, other in, um, independent theorists. But um, in in first year in particular, and it will be revisited at different points throughout the training as needed, um, uh, all of the trainees also learn a basis in Freudian and Kleinian thinking because it's essential. The independent school is about 
bringing the theoretical models together um, and to think, um, uh, you know, how best to um, use them. And there, we always have to start with classical papers, but we've been, um, but also linked to a contemporary setting. And so we have very interesting discussions with the trainees, um, you know, thinking more and more about, um, you know, the, the, the classical and, as I say, the contemporary theorists. Um, there's, um, there is flexibility in the training. Obviously, there are um, um, components of the training that have to be passed each year um, to, to be able to progress on to the next year. But in terms of the theory, um, we've got uh, trainees um, and, uh, you know, um, Akin and Nick can say more about that, but are in clinical seminars throughout all of their training. And we're really looking at people, you know, working at their pace to develop. So it's not that it's, you know, there are set things that have to be achieved year on year, but also there is that flexibility and fluidity because we understand that, you know, people come to um, different thoughts and firm up their theoretical view. You you learn a lot about what's out there, um, but it's also thinking what makes sense to you and mm -hmm. how can it inform you as a practitioner um, in, in your place of work. And as I said earlier, there also is, uh, uh, we've got a Jungian pathway for trainees who are in analysis with a Jungian analyst. Um, and they also, they go to, um, theoretical um seminars that are set up by the BJAA um and also one of the three intensive cases that um the trainees who are on the Jungian pathway do must be supervised by a Jungian um psychotherapist analyst. Um okay so trying to get to the next one. Sorry my thing is sticking a bit. I don't know, Danny, if for some, oh, here I've gone. I'm looking. So, okay. Um, the other thing just to know about um, the training is that um, trainees get a dual qualification. As I said at the very beginning, it's in partnership with Anna Freud and UCL um, that and the uh, teaching all happens on site at the BPF. And we can talk a little bit about how we've, um, you know, set that up. So we really offer uh, an integrated research clinical program. Um, and But the trainees on the program uh, achieve a clinical qualification that's signed off uh, by the um, Association of Child Psychotherapists. And we, as a training school, have to be reaccredited by them about every four years, I think, the reaccreditation happens process happens so they oversee and make sure that we're meeting standards laid out by them but also this is a UCL doctorate so the trainees who uh, uh, and the expectation is that all the trainees um, complete their doctorate and then that is um, as I say awarded by UCL which is one of the leading universities um, actually not only in the UK but in the in the world, I can't remember quite where it ranks now in world universities, but it's one of the top universities. Um, so we work very closely with them. And then the, um, and, and as I say, one of the things to say, it's Anna Freud UCL and Anna Freud as, a, as an organization has a long tradition in clinical work, education, training and research. So looking ahead, um, the um the as as Akin was saying in um in his uh was speaking to his slides you know he was saying that these are salaried jobs in the NHS so NHS England fund training for um a, a set amount of posts and the trainees um are on one day a week in training with us and four days a week in um the NHS and they're paid a gender for change um band six so it's a very good you know, paid professional doctorate. Um, Post-qualification, there is absolutely um, no problem finding jobs. Um, and the starting post would be band seven, which is a good um, uh, NHS salary. And there, people will notice there are always jobs for child psychotherapists. Um, and all of our trainees go off and uh, very easily. Um, Nick is here today who just qualified in um July this year and has picked up a post 
in the NHS and uh, as his um, uh, peer group did. Um, that child psychotherapists become highly specialist um, clinicians and then can progress through um, through the NHS into consultant posts and taking up um, uh, teaching and managerial positions as well as um, maintaining uh, clinical work. Um, and in terms of, um, and, and we're really keen to um, promote the, the NHS England has got a a very ambitious and very welcome agenda to increase the workforce in child and adolescent mental health. And so are asking us to train more and more child and adolescent psychotherapists. So um, it is good then to um, encourage people picking these posts up in the NHS, given there's been such generous funding for the training. Um, and in terms of um, future career options, one of the things about um, uh, this profession and um, uh, Akin and um, Nick, please do come in. But there are such a wide range of um, areas to work in that actually uh, it, it it feels like almost unlimited the options. Um, you know, either working as I say here on the prevention side, think or and early intervention, um, you know, to um, consultation. The um, range of settings that child psychotherapists work in are vast, going from inpatient units to looked after um, specialist teams, you know, hospital teams, eating disorders, perinatal, um, et cetera, in schools. Um, uh, so many uh, varied settings. Um, uh, child psychotherapists provide teaching, consultation, supervision and ongoing training. We welcome people back to um um, teach and to run work discussion or infant observation groups in uh, the foundation training, for example, that's part of the BPF. So there are lots of avenues in um, and that as you develop through your career, we encourage people to, um, you know, as they develop through, um, uh, you, you find the area that you may choose to specialize in. You know, it's good to start on a generic base and then think what is your particular area of interest and get you know, um, supervision and um, support around that. So I think they're all the main slides from us, yeah? Yeah. That, so I'll stop sharing and come back. I don't know if there's anything on those last few slides, um, Akin and Nick, you just want to say. Can I just add a few points, Elizabeth? Um, one is that, as you were saying about the career prospect, is that sometimes people are interested in research as well, and that's something that we encourage through the training, and that you learn a lot about how to kind of really incorporate clinical and research skills. And there are some posts in the NHS that you can actually apply um, your research skills that you have has been taught by UCL and the BPF training, that we are able to then transfer them towards our clinical NHS posts. Um, that it's really important for future um, research in child psychotherapy in particular. Um, the other thing, Elizabeth, was also the... Sorry, there was in there. Yeah. Uh, there is also the idea that you get... A, post which is paid band six from year one um, of the training but you also get an amount towards your analysis which is an extra amount of of um bursary towards that um yeah which i think it's quite important for people to be able to to fund their analysis while on the training um Thank you, Nick. I just noticed that I think there are three questions in the in the Q and A box as well. I don't yes. If, I don't know if you want to sort of consider them now or respond to them. Um, should we just we we could take those now? Is that probably um that's probably a good idea? Um, a few so more was, dropped in there. <laughs> I say, I just said the first one. I was just looking actually at the um agenda for change just trying to pull up so it's band six at what point is the sal the question is at what point does the salary training post start year three onwards the salary training post starts from year year one so it's through the whole four years of the training 
And it's it always seems like it's complicated, but don't worry because we do a huge amount of work to support trainees. So once uh, uh, once somebody's selected onto the training, we have um, uh, a number of posts in the NHS and we do an internal application um, you know, process and we work very closely with um, service supervisors. Um, so, uh, you know, trainees will be um, matched. It's a two-way process between the trainee, between the um, service supervisor um, uh, and ourselves kind of supporting that really, I think, isn't that how you'd say it? So so that will start from year one, you go, you go immediately into a training post um, and that continues uh, 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 until you qualify and the expectation is that you qualify at year four so it's a four-year funded um so the next thank you for the useful introduction to the doctorate uh with the oh what time when the question is really uh, given you don't have to do a year's preclinical analysis and um, when does analysis start and as as Akin was saying um uh, when he was speaking that um we encourage people to have an experience of uh, personal therapy um, prior to selection and coming on the training because it really helps people get a sense of what that's like and is it for you? You know, does this is this way of working something that? Um, Elizabeth, sorry, uh, yeah. sorry, I think the question is also asking about at what point do analysts ask to input about your readiness to think to 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 be on undertake the training and be on the training. Yes, yeah, so we don't ask them at this. We don't yeah. because because there isn't a preclinical requirement. Yeah. We don't ask analysts. We have an internal selection process, but um, um, but we do ask at two time points during the training. We ask taking the first intensive case whether there's you know what they're uh, if they see any reason not to take an intensive case, and also we ask coming up to qualification. So I hope that answers the question. Come back if it doesn't. Is there anything else on that, Akin, that you... I don't think so, no, thanks. Yeah, is that all right? Um, oh, the next question is about trauma and about van der Kolt and uh, what does this feel under? Um, so I don't know, Akin, please come in on this too, but actually trauma is covered in various aspects of your theoretical modules throughout the training. So you're going to cover it um, so you will revisit this time and time again throughout and we think about this and the, you know, how it links. So maybe if there's teaching on a specific topic or a specific clinical population where um, we would we know that trauma is um, will be an issue. So, for exam example, um, looked after children um, there it will be covered there, but it will be revisited at several times in the theoretical uh, module. But there are loads of opportunities in the clinical case discussion group. And we also have what we call practice and clinical development groups um, that there are small seminars where there can be really detailed discussion um, on on specific children or a specific issue that's arising. And there, so there are several opportunities. It comes in all the time, really. So yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. And I think, and, and especially in terms of the sort of sense of the bodily experience of, of trauma, which, you know, which is very much known about that. That's certainly a way that we're thinking about working with young people and children who've experienced trauma in their past. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hopefully that covers it for you, Charlotte. And Natalie's asking when did the applications open? And so the applications, um, the applications will open around middle end of November probably at the end of November and what we'll do is we'll advertise that on the um BPF website but um yeah from the from the kind of fourth week of November start looking out and um it will come up the applications you apply for the training through us once selected then the UCL bit we then link you up with how to register with UCL. So while there's information on the UCL website, because this is a UCL doctorate, um, please uh, please come to us first because you've got to get through our selection process. Um, is there an age limit? Um, so this is anonymous uh, preclinical course. Okay, there there isn't an age limit on the training. 
I guess one has to re remember you're working with children. So as Nick was saying in his presentation, it's down on the floor, playing with them and running around the clinic and doing things. So these are things to be, I guess, considered, you know, through the selection process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you want to take the, do the next one and I'll read the one below that? Is that, have you can play there? Yeah, please. so the one about, um, differences between child psychotherapist and a play therapist. Um, well, I suppose one is that we work with children at older ages as well, into adolescence and up to their early early 20s. Um, I think also our understanding of child development, our understanding of the unconscious <laughs> and those processes as well, which probably works in different ways to a play therapist. Um, we'll be very much looking at the kind of meaning of the play in a different way to, I think, to a play therapist um also as well we've been very much working with thinking about the network the child is living in the family network as well so there'd be corresponding parent work as well she's very important parent or carer work for the for the sort of therapy so i suppose it's it's a deeper way of working with, with with children and often a more longer term way as well thinking about what this was said about maybe children who've been experienced trauma or, or neglect or abuse those might be children we're working with a deeper way in a longer term way Yes. And, and I guess we can see them more frequently. So we can see yes. them, you know, three times a week, which is different to other, um, other trainings. And Elise was asking, can she apply the, an undergraduate without requiring a master's in terms of the application for us, you need to have a two, one degree. So you don't need, if you've got a two, one, then you can apply for, um, a, a UCL program, but you do need to fulfill the preclinical requirements. And uh, I think they were outlined earlier, but also we can talk more about that. Annalise, if you want to contact, um, we'll put up an email, um, later. So you can put in uh, getting information and the ACP website has information about what you need in terms of preclinical requirements. You can get them through the foundation course and, um, some other trainings here at the BPF without having to do a master's. You do need a 2-1. And in terms of international students, we have international students. And what we do is we organize a training post from for them. It may not be in an NHS. It may be in another setting, but we've got um, specific placements uh, that we can we can use. In terms yes. of the Jungian... Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I, Karen, I, Karen, sorry, carry on. Just with the Jungian pathway, you need to be an analysis with a Jungian analyst um, or training therapist. So, um, so that's important. So, if if one is interested in that, we'll talk about that at the point of selection. If you're not in um, um, analysis at that point, um, if if you are, if you do think you're interested, please do find um, a Jungian analyst therapist on the training. You must be with an ACP registered. Um, training analyst and there are a number of Jungians thanks to the BGA who have really um, supported us um, um, increasing the numbers there um, so uh, but we can talk you you need that's the key thing for us um, and you can you know, think about it beforehand come and talk to us about it um, or we'll think about it during the selection process I'm just um, thinking about the time, Elizabeth. Yeah, just thinking, sorry, I was sorry, going to say we need to wrap up and move on. Yeah, should we ask you. people to to uh, write the right email or right, contact us through yes. the training? Completely. Okay. Or can we hang on to these questions and we can type in answers? Maybe we could do that. Sorry, yes, you could also do that. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, just to say as well, everyone, uh, we're running another webinar um, for our IPCAPA um, doctorate on the 15th of November so do come along to that um, you can register on our website as well okay yes thank you thank you thank, thank you, you very much thanks uh, Nick and Nicola sorry Dorothy